I absolutely love creating stunning websites. And one of the best ways to keep improving is by recreating great looking animations I find across the web. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about copy and pasting stuff. The goal is to deconstruct what we see and rebuild it with our own lines of code. That's how you really learn. And I really believe that in the future, that's going to be one of the only ways to truly stand out. Because with AI now generating decent websites in just a few seconds, you've got to go that extra mile to really make a difference. So before we dive into the more advanced stuff like page transitions and scroll based animations, Let's start simple. With this button I spotted on the Stanger bike website. I really like the animation and I think it's super versatile. You could use it in all kinds of projects. If you're looking to level up your web design game and learn how to implement top tier animations on your own site, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. All right, let's break this one down. Stick with me and you will see how easy it is to build. We're talking just five lines of HTML with a bit of CSS on top of that to get that smooth button animation added to your world. And by the way, every tutorial on this channel comes with a code pen and a workflow snippet, link in the description. Let's get started. So for that button, what we first need is an actual button. So let's just start with an A tag, okay? With the text hover me, right? So now we have our basic button, doesn't look that good. So let's just center the button um, in the viewport so that it looks a, li a little bit better since we have only a button and else nothing. So for that, we're going to do display flex on the body or we can do it a bit shorter, display grid and display item center. Okay. So now it's still not in the middle because the body doesn't take the full height. So for that, we just do height 100VH and now it should be okay. Now we have it in the middle let's just add a, a subtle subtle background to the body so that it's not pure white it's those subtle details guys that make the difference okay so okay now we have something like reddish white now let's focus on the actual button so if we look at the end result we have something like that right so there are actually not a lot of things going on there's just the text that goes to the top that transforms to the top and then we have that black background that grows that grows so let's just focus on the styling for now. So real quick, for that we have a background color. So it's not pure red, so I'm just going to copy and paste that color. Then our text is white. So we don't want to have the underline, so for that we're going to do text decoration none. Uh, we want it to be uppercase. Um, let's also change the font because it doesn't look that good right now. So let's just use a basic sans serif font. All right. And finally, just set some padding and some border radius. So for that, let's add some padding inline. So some horizontal padding. And by the way, guys, I'm using pixels throughout the whole video. But of course, if you want to build something with accessibility in mind, you can use RAMs. But for tutorial purposes, I just use pixels because it's, it's just easier. And some and some padding blocks, some, some vertical padding like that. And finally, some border radius like that. Great. So now we have a good starting point. Looks the same, I would say. Um, now let's let's just do it step by step. So let's just focus on the text that goes up, okay? On the other text that comes from the bottom, okay? So let's just focus on that. So what we want, we want to move. If we go, we don't need JavaScript actually. So let's just move that out of the way. So we need to target that element. So let's just put that inside a span, right? So that we can actually target it in CSS. If we target a span, what we want is first of all we need to duplicate that text okay but instead of doing it in html we can do it much easier in css with the text shadow property so we can barely see it if we just put it real quick in black so that you can see it it just duplicates it okay so basically a shadow that looks like the text much easier um what these properties are like the zero here if we put 12 pixels is just it offsets the shadow Okay, but we don't want to offset it. So we let it at zero. Two EM is basically like two times the font size of our button. So the default font size is 16. So basically it moves the text shadow 32 pixels down. Okay, but let's say if our button would be like 20 pixel font size, it would move it by 40 pixels. Okay, so it's dynamic. That's why we use EM. And finally, that one is the blur, I believe. So yeah, but we don't want to blur it since it's text. That's why we leave it at zero or oh yeah, we can actually just leave it out. But let's just put the zero back. And finally, the color of the shadow, which is in our case white. Perfect. Now what we want is that when we hover, it should actually move everything to the top. 
Okay, so for that, you're just gonna target that span on horror. And what we want to do is basically translate y minus 2 em. So we moved it 2 em to do uh, down. And now we move it 2 em up on hover, right? We move the whole thing 2 em up. So 32 pixels in our case. And what we also see is that the text that goes up, so the text that we see here that goes up turns transparent, okay? So for that, we can also say that the color of our actual text, not the shadow that is underneath, but the actual text should turn should turn transparent, okay? So now if we hover, it just turns transparent, but it doesn't move actually. And the reason it doesn't move is because by default, the span element has display inline on it. And inline elements in HTML uh, don't move. Like you can't transform them. So for that, we just need to say that we want to display block or span element and now it moves the thing is since there is no transition on it you just see that you don't see it very clearly but you'd see that text disappears because basically it goes to the top but we can't see shit right now so let's just add a, a little transition on it so for that let's just say transition all 45 seconds or let's say dot three seconds is right so now we have our animation right but we don't want it to overflow. So what I will be tempted to do is to just set the overflow hidden on the A tag. But if we do that, if we look at our animation, out of the final one, the black background that grows, grows outside the red, outside the button actually, you know, it grows bigger than the actual background of the button. So if you set the overflow hidden on that, um, it will mask that. So we can't set an overflow hidden on the actual button, so we just need to add a container to our button. How do we actually add a div to that code then? Right, like that. And then we take our span element and just put it inside like that. And now if we look real quick at our container, so let's just set a background, let's just set a background color of green. Okay, and now if we add the overflow, it looks better. But if we look at our final animation, the text actually doesn't cut around the text like the it's the overflow doesn't cut just this part like the text moves to the top of the button and to the bottom of the button so for that we just need to move the padding to the container so that the container grows okay and now the text has more room to move around okay perfect let's just remove that background color green because it looks ugly so now we have our first animation that uh, our first yeah our first effect that works and let's just start the second one now. We want to have something like a, a, a dark box that grows from the bottom, okay? So for that, we could create another HTML element, but we can do that even easier with just a pseudo element. So what we want to do is we just want to target the pseudo element. So for that, um, we just set content to nothing because we don't want to write something position absolute. The background, the background color is black right and let's just set the inset zero so basically what inset does is like setting top zero left zero right zero and bottom zero so it just grows um the element to the size of the parent so inset zero the thing is because there's no position relative on the parent like the next element so basically what happens is that the the before element grows to the size of the of the body element so if we want to constrain that to only the button, we can just set the position relative to the button. And now we have it like that. And the reason why the span element doesn't like disappears is because we just have also, we just need to also set the position relative to the span element. And now we have it like that. Okay. So that's great. But now it starts not fully grown out like that. So, and also it has actually, it also has some border radius. Okay. But we, to make it grow, we're actually going to use clip path. So for that, we're just going to use clip path, okay? It's much easier. We could also use height and width um, or even scale, but scale will distort the, the border radius because we need a border radius on it. So let's just use clip path. It's the easiest one. So for that, we're just going to set some 
border radius like that and that's the end state okay that's how it should like actually not now it should grow a little bit bigger than the container so if we set a post an opacity we see that with int with inset zero it grows to the size of the container right and with minus two pixels we can make it grow a little bit larger okay than the container and let's just set the round maybe to six so that it matches a bit better it's all about details guys so that's the end state so we can copy that end state and just say when we hover the button we want the before pseudo element to look like that okay but now we need to set the initial state before we hover okay so let's just remove the opacity we don't want any opacity so as we know inset zero makes it grow to the full width and height of the parent container okay if we add the negative values it makes it grow even bigger so if we add positive values it makes it shrink so there are always four parameters for that the first one is top right bottom and left okay so if we would set here 12 pixels it makes it shrink from the top okay now if we look at our final button we see that it grows from like the bottom left and right okay it grows from the bottom left and right okay so basically it grows from let's just set let's say it's eight pixel okay so eight pixel eight pixel and eight pixel so it grows from there right if you look again it grows from there but the top one is actually at the same height as the bottom one okay and for that what the one thing we could do is say okay it's not 12 so it's more like maybe 20 now it's even more so maybe 40 okay maybe 42 but it's not the right way of doing it because if the size of the button changes then we need to change that manually what we can do is we know that the bottom one is eight pixels so we can just say we can do a calculation and say 100% which will be it will be down there okay like if we say 50% it's in the middle okay so 100% it's down there and we don't want it to be 100% it's 100% minus the 8 pixels of the button okay and just so you see if we would say like 9 pixels it would stick out a little bit okay so 8 pixels makes it match perfectly with the bottom one okay and like that if we just set now a transition on it so we go right here and say transition we want to transition the clip path let's say dot three second is okay and now we have our button animation right but there's one more thing that doesn't look right it's that the text doesn't look like it's in the dark background it's inside a container it looks like it overflows it you know and that if we remember the container clips the overflowing stuff okay so if we put a background again on our thing you see okay the text moves has all of this space to move around okay but since we want to clip it where the background actually starts we remember the background starts at eight pixels so we can just clip it at eight pixels so for that we just say instead of having a padding block because padding makes it the text has space or inside the padding the space can move around right but if we set a margin so instead of padding top we say padding uh, sorry instead of padding block we just say padding top 14 pixels then we say margin button eight pixels and then we need inst uh, so that we have the same size on top and of bottom we just need to add six pixels as a padding and now we see that when you hover the text actually disappears where it should disappear and appears at the right spot okay so now if we remove that ugly ass background we have a button animation and now the little things like now it's it's just about details guys so if you want to make it look like a really premium what we can do is we can define a custom easing so if we go on google right now real quick and google and google cubic bezier we can actually create our own curve right or own animation curve so the one we use is ease okay so it's this one so it starts pretty fast and then it slows down slowly it's a bit like a ease out but it also starts a bit slowly in the beginning and then slows down um and we can create our own one so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play with that okay and we're just gonna try to the thing is it's all about experimenting right now so you need to find the right the right spot right you need to find the you need to test a lot and the one easing that i like that i use a lot this cubic busy is one that i really like okay so it's basically if you go back into our code pen we can just set here custom variable it's basically this one okay so now we can use that variable and just replace it at the two at these two um we can just replace it at these two places right now it's maybe a little bit fast we can just make it a little bit slower and it just smooths a bit the, the animation out it's just details guys but it's just about details so here we have it